Our goal in analyzing this data set is to generalize the results to the population that the sample was drawn from. In other words, if we see changes in brain activity in our sample, can we say that these changes will be likely seen in the population as well? To test this, we will run a group level analysis, also known as a second level analysis. In SPM, this means that we calculate the standard error and the mean for a contrast estimate, and then test whether the average estimate is statistically significant. Once all of the first level analyses have finished, navigate to the Flanker directory and type mkdir second level underscore inc minus con. This will store our second level results for the inc minus con contrast. Then, from the SPM GUI, click on the button Specify Second Level. The default test that will be conducted is a one sample t-test, and there are only two fields that need to be filled in. The output directory for the results, and the contrast images that were created during each first level analysis. First, double click on the directory field and select the second level Inc minus con folder you just created. For the scans field, navigate to sub 01's first level directory and select the incongruent minus congruent contrast image, con0001.nii. If you're unsure of what each contrast is, you can load the first level results by using the results button as we did previously. Contrast 1 is inc minus con, contrast 2 is con minus inc, and so on. Navigate into all of the other subjects' first level directories and select the con0001.nii image for each subject. You can use the filter fields to do this more efficiently. When you have finished selecting the con0001 images for all 26 subjects, click the green Go button. Specifying the model only takes a second. When it finishes, you will need to estimate the model just as you did with the first level analyses. From the SPM GUI, click the Estimate button. Select the SPM.mat file from the second level flanker directory you just created, and then click the green Go button. Like the first level analyses, we can now view the results by clicking on the Results button from the SPM GUI. Select the SPM.mat file from the second level Inc minus con directory and click Done. You will see another contrast window, but with a slight difference. Whereas the first level analyses had a design matrix that contained all of the regressors in the model, this design matrix looks like a white box. That indicates that there is only one regressor to test, namely the mean activation across all the individual contrast images that went into the model. Click Define New Contrast, call the contrast Inc minus Con, and give it a contrast weight of 1. When you are finished, it should look like this. Click OK, and then click Done. You will be asked the same questions as before about masking, cluster thresholding values, and cluster extent. For this group analysis, select the following. No apply masking, no p-value adjustment, a threshold of 0 0.001, and extent threshold of 20. This will threshold the image to only show clusters that are composed of individual voxels each passing a threshold of 0 0.001. In a later video, we will learn how to determine the exact cluster defining threshold that gives us a false positive rate of 0 0.05. The threshold we're using now is just for convenience and shouldn't be used for publication. Afterwards, you should see output like this, showing a significant cluster in the dorsal ACC. Again, just like in first level analyses, you can render these on a canonical template brain found in the SPM12 canonical directory to more clearly see where the activation lies. If you are only interested in where there are significant differences between the incongruent and congruent conditions, then the above steps are all that you need to do. As you will see in the next video on ROI analysis, however, it is useful to examine the activity in each condition separately to see what drives the effect of incongruent minus congruent. To prepare for that analysis, create two new second level directories, one for the simple effect of each contrast, mkdir second level underscore incongruent, 
and also mkdir second level underscore congruent. Using the same procedure as before, we find that the incongruent contrasts are located in the O3 file for each subject, and the congruent contrasts are located in the O4 file. Starting with the incongruent contrast images, click on Specify Second Level, and then for the directory input, select the Second Level Incongruent folder. Using a similar method as above, select the CON0003 images for each subject. You will then do the same steps that we did for the ink minus con contrast, loading all of the images and then specifying and estimating the model. Do the same procedure for the congruent condition as well. Now that you've finished running the group analysis, you are ready to do more specific tests using a method called region of interest or ROI analysis. All that and more in the next video.